Well, we know the heat certainly is the big story here, right? The fact that we're pushing records over the next few days, the fact that we're talking about what will be a heat wave, the worst of the heat through Thursday. Hi, I'm Matt Noyce, One Degree Outside Weather Network, OneDegreeOutside.com. But the heat is not the whole story. There's a lot going on in the weather map in the eastern two-thirds of the country. First of all, here is the hot dome of air that's with high pressure across the eastern United States. By the way, this is not devoid of thunderstorms. We have a chance of severe thunderstorms each afternoon in New England over the coming days, including today. I'm going to show you all that here in just one second. Cold front slicing into the northern dome of heat coming across the northern plains, flooding rain out there that I'll show you. And then you've got Gulf of Mexico moisture that's pluming north of a developing tropical system for which there are tropical advisories out of the south coast of Texas running down into Mexico. Here is the area that's been highlighted for an elevated chance of flash flooding. It makes sense. If I show you the the forecast rainfall just into the overnight tonight through just after midnight. Look at this, nine inches of rain on the way to portions of northern Minnesota. Uh, that certainly is severe flash flooding potential out there. Meanwhile, a foot of rain falling in the Gulf of Mexico. It's falling onto the water for now, but that's that developing tropical system. Closer to home, you look and say, it doesn't look like we get that much, right? You zoom the view, eh, a little bit of rain up in northern Maine and mountains into eastern New York. Yeah, but wait a minute. Even if there's not a lot of area that's covered by forecast precipitation, there is a ton of energy in the atmosphere. The next few days are all pretty similar. I pulled a Wednesday afternoon snapshot, but this would apply uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You've got a ton of heat and humidity. That's all thunderstorm energy. The way we measure that in scientific terms is in joules per kilogram. It's how much energy there is by volume. But nonetheless, what you're talking about here is anything over 500 kind of keys in as, okay, is it good? It is a good chance you get enough energy for thunderstorms. You've got over 4,000 joules per kilogram in eastern New York. You're running over 3,700 through not only northern and central New England, but all the way down in a northern mass. In other words, this is what we would call a powder keg of instability. All you need is something to touch off those storms. What could touch them off? There's not really any disturbances coming through over the next couple of days with high pressure in charge, but when it gets this hot and you're this humid and you have that much energy, even what we call differential heating can touch off the thunder Storm. So in this case, that might be mountains versus valleys. That might be some areas with a darker terrain cover than a lighter terrain cover. Any of that can lead to at least differences in heating that can touch off thunderstorm development. So you'll notice the forecast radar as we get into our Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, there's not a lot of it. But boy, where it develops, it may be severe with damaging wind gusts. So you want to stay on guard for that. The general motion will be coming out of the western sky on that for later in the day today. Again, isolated but strong with frequent lightning, the chance for hail mixed in with the damaging wind as well. Keep the notifications on on our app. It's funny. You say, all right, smart guy. Well, how come the Storm Prediction Center has just general thunderstorm action? Look, they understandably, they have to work out verification, right? So if you get one isolated thunderstorm and they've highlighted a big area for potential of severe weather, that's terrible verification. So from a verification standpoint, you got to call it general thunderstorm action. If you get an isolated uh, one or two or three severe storms, then that falls outside kind of the average. But that's the expert explanation on how that works. Okay, in terms of what we're talking about in the coming days on heat and humidity, notice these temperatures reaching up 95 to 100 degrees on Wednesday. Uh, the maps are a little bit different from what we've had lately. We're in a transition process. We're actually going to be getting a nice map upgrade in the next couple of weeks. I think you're going to love. Uh, but anyways, it feels like forecast. Look at that, 100 to 105 for a whole bunch of spots on Wednesday, right? That goes all the way in upstate New York, Syracuse. Feels like 102 Wednesday. Wednesday's the same thing, isolated storms, but they could even be down in northern Massachusetts on Wednesday afternoon in early evening and the isolated storms could be severe thursday we're talking about temperatures still at 95 to 100 feels like temperatures still either side of 100 degrees all the way up to bangor maine my goodness in the thursday afternoon and early evening radar shows that chance of a storm all the way down to the mass pike we think Friday, the chance of a storm is just about all across New England. Now, it'll be scattered stuff, but there'll be more of them Friday. Because remember, I told you, heat starts to break down on Friday, right? And that does start to make a difference for us. By the time we get to Saturday, at this point, it looks like probably there'll be a number of showers that crop up as we continue to kind of change the air over. And I would always encourage you to use our app and find the chance of rain on any given day if you're concerned about that. And of course, be sure to set your location for the most accurate forecast. That's how it looks for now. I hope this has provided some good insight for you on the meteorology behind what's driving the forecast in the next few days.